MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. We welcome uh, Frank Trigg into our studios here at the uh, Don Best uh, Enterprise. Frank, always a pleasure. How you doing? Thanks. Thanks. It's good to be back. Uh, you're uh, looking very under chipper this weekend. No, uh, you know, for everyone out there right now, we actually tape this show Sunday afternoons. Right. Uh, it's the worst possible time to tape a show. It really is. Sunday afternoon in Las Vegas. You know, if we were doing this Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati, no problem. it'd be different. No problem. Yeah, Sunday afternoon in Vegas. Eh. <laughs> you know, here, here's the problem. Not, not, only, not only Sunday afternoon is like a bad time in Vegas, because, like, right now I could be at a pool. I mean, it's raining outside, but I could have been at a pool right now, <laughs> hanging out, whatever. But I had to come get dressed, and I had to, you know, get ready to be in on studio. But also to remember, it's Saturday night after. Khan was in town last night, which yep. obviously Gabe went to. Yep. And Strike Force was on TV. And Friday night, there's four different fights going off throughout the country on the West Coast. We had two fights in, in L.A. that were untelevised. And then there was another fight going off fight uh, in last England night. with Hay and Chisora as well. I mean, it was crazy going off last night as far as fights go. And of course, when you fight, you know, I had a couple of big bottles of so big bottles of sake, and gave that one, a but two, huh? Yeah, yeah, I killed it. Yeah, yeah. Killed uh, it. You know what? I'm not, I've drank sake a couple of times, but that's the thing. Saturday nights, you go to a fight, and I'm not one of these guys that drinks a sprite and popcorn when I go to a fight. Frank, I mean, I, maybe I should. Maybe I should. I got to grow up, man. I'm 40, you know, 41 years old, but you about to turn 42, right? Yeah, I'm about to turn 42 in August, but. Uh, I like to have a good time when I go out, Frank. And, you know, I did have a good time. Really enjoyed myself. Were you fight. working last night? No, no. See, when I'm usually at a fight, I'm no. working as a commentator. Yeah, so I know, yeah. I can't drink until after the, the job's done. But usually, if I'm there hanging out as a fan, dude, I'm drinking like everybody else. Yeah, no, I'm i got to be there. honest. I don't even do the credential stuff anymore. Even for the UFC, I could. Yep. People ask me, well, oh, we get a pass, whatever. Why don't we get a pass? Because I want to sit and, you know, I want to sit up in the stands and get blasted with the fans. That's what I did the last yeah, year I was in town, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... That's what I want to do. But you're right. It's a crazy week. It, Frank, it's amazing, isn't it, how it seems like it's like three months ago that Silva and Sonnen fought, huh? I it know. was it's, last it's Saturday, last, yeah. man. It was last week. Last week I was at a UFC. Last that week was like I was, worlds ago. I was a fan, singing in the crowd, drinking, having a great time, hanging out with Jay Glazer and, and Kenny Florian before they went on air, like doing that whole game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm in the stands like cheering and throwing popcorn and <laughs> getting, you know, doing the whole bit, like being a real fan. And then I'm out at the after parties and I'm hanging out. I was, I was having a great time thinking – well, I'm glad I'm up here in the stands for this one. I don't want to be down there being Joe Rogan and, and, and Mike Goldberg because they got a tough job to do right now. So, uh, so Anderson Silva, it was only last week. He beats mm -hmm. Chael Sonnen. No, no, no. Come on, Gabe. Destroys Chael Destroys. Sonnen. It wasn't even. Yeah, no, he, he killed him. He destroyed him. He yeah. destroyed him. Knee to the chest, a couple of shots to the face. Um, gets him out of his life. You can just see the relief. It was like, oh, thank God. This, this guy's out of my life now. Yeah. Yeah, Three there years. it is. Three nights later, you know, there's Chris Weidman. And it's funny because, uh, you know, Anik brought up somewhere Anderson Silva's watching. And I thought to myself, I bet you he's not. I bet you he doesn't even know who Weidman is, doesn't care. He's at home with his yeah, kids no, and he his does. wife. He's not he's watching. Done. He's not sitting yeah. there watching. But I was just thinking after, somebody must have sent him a text. Said, hey, uh, we got a fight coming up. This, kid, uh, this kid's for real. Before we get into the Silva-Weidman stuff, Pretty impressive performance, man, by Chris Weidman, huh? You know, I picked Munoz in that fight. I thought Munoz was, even though Weidman was the favorite, Munoz had the better wrestling style for MMA, had the better overall technique, and was I completely proven wrong. Weidman gained a new fan in me that night, specifically because of how he, from the very beginning, stops Munoz from getting any kind of ability to get into a space for a takedown. He doesn't allow him ever to set up to yeah. get to a takedown. Let alone does Munoz, anytime he shoots, he kind of backs him off and buries him out. But he doesn't keep the motion where, where at any point when Munoz will be able to take a shot off. He's always kind of off step, off foot, not able to get in. When he does finally take any kind of shot, he gets stuffed. Weidman beats him from the very beginning to the very end. Honestly. In every aspect of the sport, every aspect too, wrestling, striking, Submission game. Yeah. It didn't make a difference. The distance game. The, the little game that, that, that fans don't really think about. The footwork game. The head height game. The chin position game. He beat him in every single that's, position. That's what it's all about, isn't it, Frank? As you stay, that's the stuff that I'm not going to say because you guys are smart that are watching the show right now. But that's what makes Anderson Silva so good, isn't it? It's the he, it's his positions and his mm -hmm. angles. It's not rocket science, is it? But you you can't really hit him. He's always kind of sideways. There's a way. And you know, you being the fighter you are, some guys kind of just stand up in front of you and stuff, and they oh. get killed. The guys that are on the angles, it's all angles, isn't it? Is it's it all fighting angles about angles? 
The whole reason why Manny Pacquiao is so good isn't because he's left-handed. It isn't because he throws 150,000 punches every round. It's because his foot is always moving, and he's making his opponent turn. Anderson Silva does the exact same thing. As he steps out of your foot range, he makes you turn to face him. He steps back the other way. He makes you overcompensate. He steps back the other side, and he cracks you. It's the same thing he did to Forrest Griffin. The same thing he did to Charles Sonnen to make him get that first kind of the hit to kind of put him down on the ground and kind of offset the entire ending. It's what makes him good, and that's what Chris Weidman did to Munoz. Now, a lot of people are saying, I put it out on Twitter. I said, if Weidman... And if Weidman is still in a fight, it doesn't make sense for the UFC to do it, and why? A lot of guys came back and said, look, it's not going to it's not gonna sell the way these other fights We got a lot sell. of responses immediately. Uh, we, had, there. we had 35 responses right off the bat. Yeah. But the best response came, came from Johnny Hundnall. Uh, I'm probably saying his, his last name wrong. H-U-D-N-A-L-L. It's uh, J-Hud the Truth. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's uh, J H U D T H A T R U T H on Twitter. You got to follow him. He actually comes out the best answer out of all of them, even though I don't really agree with him, but it made me laugh out loud, so he's the one I got to run with. He says uh, C and S aren't even close on the keyboard. He's trying to say that Weidman and Silver aren't that close. People are throwing out a, uh, Alan Belcher, they're yeah. throwing out the winner of, uh, of uh, the, the, the Tim week, Bochas yeah, and, Lombard. and Lombard fight. People are throwing out a bunch of other, other things, but I'm telling you, both these guys just finished within four days of each other of their fights. These other guys are going to fight for a little while. Oh, the timing's perfect as well, huh? And let's not forget... John Jones in the exact same position when he started his run. No, nope, you're exactly Weidman yep. is in the exact same position yep. that John Jones was when he came in to fight Hua. I honestly think that Weidman is the next guy in line. Is his time, do you think it's, you think it's, now I was talking to uh, one of Weidman's uh, managers actually the other day. Okay. And uh, Weidman's going to join us uh, next week. He was going to be with us today, uh, but he shut his phone off. Things are going crazy, you know, mm -hmm. this, this past couple of days uh, for him. And I was talking to one of his managers, and uh, it, it was debatable, even within their camp. He says, Chris really wants Anderson, man. He thinks he can beat him. And I said, hey, not to be a jerk, guys, but you should milk this a little bit. Make yeah. some money, man. Yeah. Make some money. Fight Slow another. You got better sponsors now. You, suddenly, you're the it kid, right? Mm -hmm. Make some more money. Make another fight. Be careful of what you wish for, man. Anderson yeah. Silva's 15-0 in the UFC for a reason. Be careful. And... So what, what do you do? If you're Weidman, what do you do? Because if he loses, yes. you're stealing the kid's heart, man. No, he's and he's only heart, 24. But you're putting him back three years. Because yeah. it's a three-year track to get back up in there. Unless, yeah. unless you're, you know, unless you're Chael Sonnen did in two years. But really, if you're, once you fight Anderson Silva, you're three years away from fighting him again. So what do you Unless do if you're in that camp, Frank? What do, you, what do you think? Like I'm going to take both sides of the coin. Like once, fighting, he can handle himself yes, with them. Yes, absolutely. But there's no guarantee he's going to win. I know everyone thinks he's going to win. I think if they fought tomorrow, doesn't Silva win? Yes, Silva wins tomorrow. Absolutely. But here's what we have left. We have Bisping. Yeah. Did, didn't Bisping already fight him? Didn't, didn't Bisping already get knocked out by a guy like Dan Henderson? Didn't, didn't all these things already? And, then, <laughs> and we have Hector Lombard. Who has it's a, funny because Bisping was bitching the other day. Yeah. Oh, Lombard, if he gets a shot, it's, you know, that's that's bull. And yep. I'm thinking, Bisping, you've had everything given to you because you're yep. British, man. Like, yeah. And he's 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 earned. He's gotten better. Yep. He's a decent fighter. But come on, man. He's yeah. gotten a lot of breaks in his career, yeah. Bisping. He can't Absolutely. complain about anybody getting a break. No, not at all. And the problem with Hector Lombard, even though he's he hasn't lost in forever and he's what is he on a 22 fight win yeah. streak or whatever and anybody I've said it before anybody gets on that kind of a win streak I don't care if all the guys are complete tomato cans you have to show up every night and be ready to go because one of those guys can clip your catcher with something that's going to finish the fight and Hector stopped all that from happening every single time but he's never fought anybody in the top 20. Yeah. He hasn't fought anybody in the top 20. So you're talking about a guy oh if he wins one fight against Tim Bochet then all of a sudden he's, now he's in He's going to be number one in the title We'll line. give you our picks for those fights uh, in the next segment as well. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why is he always the next guy in line? Yeah. Then you have Bisping. It's like, well, okay, I can see, I can see Belcher. I, that makes sense to me, okay? I can see a, a kind of a, a parlay here because Anderson doesn't want to fight all that much. Let him have a little bit of a longer break. Yeah, exactly. What's another take, thing, yeah. take the winner of, of, um, of uh, uh, Lombard and, and Tim and the winner of, like, um, Jeez, I don't even know. Like maybe who's Bisping fighting next? Like one of those kind of deals. Like with throwing Bisping in that mix, like the winner of those guys kind of get the next and let Weidman kind of have a little bit more time. He's also undefeated in the UFC, but he's not 15 and 0 in the UFC, and he doesn't hasn't had. And you raise a, you're title a good fights. point. If you're Bisping and you're Belcher and these guys, as spectacular as Weidman is, it's not mm -hmm. your time yet. No, give and it, it seems like people are pushing it, and that's why the UFC is successful as they are. And Dana White, after Dana White said, slow down, everybody. Because yeah. people, you know what it's like, Frank. The media want to be the matchmaker. Yes, absolutely. After the fight, yeah. 
well, what's what's next, right? Oh, Weidman versus Silva. No, no. And Dana, you know, that's why I love Dana. You know, you don't always got to agree with him, but he sees the big picture. Yep. He said, hey, let's slow down. And I love what Dana said. He said, let's see what happens with Hector Lombard and Tim Boach next week. Yeah, let's see what happens. In other that. words, let's, you know, that makes sense. I, Me personally, I don't think it would be a smart move for Weidman to fight Silva now. Right. A. B, I don't think it's fair to the other guys. As in, as impressive as it was, yeah. still got to fight another fight, don't you? Well, the problem is, too, is that when you're having a number one contender, you want people to know who he is. And a lot of yeah, people really don't know who Chris Weidman is. Yeah. A lot of people don't know who he is. A lot of people know Hector Lombard just because he's fighting on the other promotions and the other networks. They know who he is. He's got this big run. And when he comes over, they'll make a lot of hype around him. And he's got that style. He's short. He's squat. He's a fire plug. A bipolar opposite of Anderson Silva, who's tall, long, and lean. <laughs> Anderson Silva is a long, cagey, rangy fighter that will catch you. He's very, very smart. And Lombard is a quick Cuban fire plug. I'm just full of, you know, piss and vinegar. Joey Odessa says right that Lombard's the best fighter in the history of fighting for one round. Yes. Like, he, he just, he leaves it all out there. I've heard stories about him, actually. Big jerk in training. Like, oh, yeah, he'll try to hurt you. He, he, yeah, no, yeah he, he'll yeah. try to hurt you, yeah. yeah. No, like, he really does. Like, I, I, told, uh, I told a couple <laughs> of the guys, Lombardo and some of the other guys, yeah, come on, train, come on, train. We got to come on, train. But, uh, but I'm letting you know. That I'm not working out with I'm not working out with Hector. It's really? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you're not gonna. I'm not, no disrespect. Yeah. I'm not taking the risk of me getting my knee blown out because he's got an ego problem. Also, proving he beat him. No, I've heard team. somebody else tell me that that he actually wants to fight. Yeah. Like he, if you hit him, he gets pissed off. Yeah. And then, but he wants to hit you as hard as he wants, right? Yeah. And I, you know, I play a pitter pat game when I'm first sparring with somebody. I don't. You, the whole game of being a good sparring partner is not to crush your opponent when you can. He's your sparring partner. Yeah. He's not your opponent. Totally different. <laughs> so you pitter patted me, hit him with a couple of hooks. You kind of blame him out a little bit. And all of a sudden, I've heard from a couple of different guys, like, oh, yeah, he started coming after me. What'd you do? <laughs> Covered up and waited for the bell to ring. <laughs> like, okay. I heard Rashad, actually. Garcia, poor little Leonard Garcia told yeah. me Rashad Evans just killed him in the gym. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. It happens exactly. everywhere. It's just what goes on. But. Okay, so Weidman, um, I don't know. He might get the dis He might, though. Like you said, you don't have to be 15 to know. John Jones got the shot. Yeah. Kane Velasquez was a champion at 8-0, 9-0, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and almost, Weidman is the number one contender, mm -hmm. but life isn't always fair. It does it. That's what Dane is trying to say here. Like, let's look you at know, a big picture. You raise a good point, too. They could sell it, but not quite yet. I mean, you're going to yeah. put Weidman on a poster, and no one's going to know what the hell this guy is, right? Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be difficult. Let's, put, let's have Weidman fight a couple of the guys. Um, and honestly, I, th I even think if they put Lombard in there, that Lombard will get destroyed by Anderson Silva, even after, you know, it's just not going to happen. And it's going to be one of those, okay, now we're really stuck. We have nobody left. They need to keep, they kind of yeah, need to keep yeah. a Weidman back to kind of keep him safe and keep him ready. Not safe in the sense of, oh, protect him, but in the fact that safe, they need to keep building him up, keep letting him go. And let's, let's not jump him from, hey, I beat two top ten guys to being the pound for pound best guy in the world. Let's not make that jump yet. Let's look okay, at a couple of top ten guys. Let's move up to another top ten guy we have in the ranks and see what happens. He beats that guy, now he's in. And another thing, you know, you're, we're, we're in agreement as well. If you're Weidman and you're the UFC, you want to get this kid out there, you want to market him a little bit like they did with Edgar, mm -hmm. put him in some commercials, get him on some talk shows and, like, you know, the mainstream Kimmel, whatever. Yeah. Get him out there. But he's not even that yet. No. You know, if you call Jimmy Kimmel, they're gonna, Chris Weidman, who, what? Yeah, what are we going to do with that? Yeah, and nice he beat Munoz. Who cares? We're not putting him on a national TV show. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I agree. You know, build, build it up, build it up a little bit. And you're right. Uh, with Anderson Silva as well, Anderson's in Brazil, right? He doesn't want He's not ready yeah. to fight now. Like, Anderson wants to fight once a year, basically. Right, you yeah. Know? So, Weidman, you want to keep him a little busier, huh? Yeah, you want to keep him a little, I have him fight one more time, and him and Anderson can probably meet up. You know, why don't probably fight end of the year sometime, maybe early next year, and then put the, and him and Silva meet up middle of the year next year. All right, so speaking of uh, speaking of uh, Hector Lombard, uh, we're going to come back. We'll break down uh, the fights in Calgary. And i got to tell you, Frank, uh, Dana White uh, said it, that uh, this is the card that caused him the most grief, most changes. Yeah. It's actually nine fighters have been taken off this card. Yeah. That's nine a whole, fighters. That's a, whole, that's a whole fight card. Yeah, yeah. And in the next segment, you're going to see, I'm going to have to have a piece of paper in front of me because uh, who's fighting? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's changed every day. But uh, Hector Lombard uh, makes his UFC de debut. That's pretty interesting. And the kid, man, the California kid. Everybody's counting the kid. Uh, everyone's counting him out. They're acting like the California kid's done. He's got nothing left in the tank. They're awarding it to Peraro. I like what Uriah said. He said, yeah, this guy's 26-0. and 0. He goes, who 26 wins? Who on that list wouldn't have I beaten as well? I think people are underestimating Faber a little bit. We'll get Frank Triggs' uh, opinion when we come back. You're watching MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network.